Kids Church, welcome, welcome back, back to another Bible time with me, Sam. So if all of you can just close your eyes and bow your heads, except for Pablo, because you can't close his eyes, uh, just close your eyes and bow your heads so that we can start this sermon. Thank you, Lord Heavenly Father, for this beautiful, beautiful day that you have given us. We ask you to please bless this sermon that I'm going to give to the kids, and we ask you to also bless every single person that is watching this at home. May you please bless all of us in your name we say, Amen. So, like I said, today we are talking about friendship. As kids, we meet a lot of people throughout our lives who become our friends. Whether we meet them at church, at school, at summer camps, through another friend, basically anywhere. Oh yeah, I remember making friends with this one boy at the McDonald's playground. Turns out, he goes to my school now and we're pretty good friends if you ask me. Well, that's one good example, and I'm pretty sure other people can relate to you as well. While we make many friendships as we grow up, we can lose some and grow stronger with others. I know it may seem bittersweet, but it's a part of life. We will be talking more about this throughout the sermon, and we will also be going into one of the many stories about friendships. It is a story of the friendship between David and Jonathan. So we go into point number one encouragement and risks now david and jonathan were best friends and when i say best friends i mean best friends jonathan's father was king saul and jonathan was supposed to be next in line as king but god said that david the chosen one was to be the next ruling king this did not bother jonathan because he would always do what was best for his friend and because he loved david and because that he knew that God was with him at all times. So, I'm guessing that Jonathan was a really good friend because he wasn't jealous of David, but supported him and encouraged him, even though other people would have been angry at him. That's exactly right. Jonathan here is representing what it truly means to be a good friend to another because he loved David like a brother. Now, back to the story. King Saul, on the other hand, was jealous of David and wanted to kill him. Jonathan feared for David's life, but was unsure his father really wanted to kill him, but helped David and hide until he knew that it was 100% safe. After finding out for sure that the king really wanted to kill David, he went to David saying, crying, go in peace. In the name of the Lord, we've promised to be friends. We have said, the Lord is a witness between you and me. He's a witness between your children and my children forever. Then David left and Jonathan went back into town. True friends are like Jonathan. He could have easily been jealous of David, but instead encouraged him and supported him throughout all of this. He took the risk of his own life and his relationship with his father for David because he knew that it was right. He went behind his father's back to save David, which is a great risk, if you ask me. We could put this into our own lives as well. So, now, I'm guessing that all friends might not be like Jonathan. And we will sometimes fail as friends as well. It's a harsh truth, but yes. We also need to recognize when we aren't being great friends and change our ways and ask for forgiveness. Oh, 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 my mom gave me some great advice the other day about good friends as well. Let me try to remember. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah. She said that good friends will always tell you if you're being unfair, sinful, or when you're doing something that is not good for you or who you are. That is some great advice, Pablo. And it is so true. Good friends will tell you when you're doing something wrong. Now we go into point number three. You keep some, you lose some. When it comes to friendships, the greatest friends are the ones that have the greatest commitment. Samantha, when you say great friendships require great commitment, does that mean all my friendships are gonna have great commitment? Because I have lost a couple of really good friendships, especially from the transition to middle school. Well, only the great and true friends have great commitment. And when you have great commitment, you can overcome and win any ups and downs in your friendship. 
I know it's hard to grow apart from friends you really enjoyed being around. But if the reason you grew apart is because one of you just lost interest in being friends, then the commitment wasn't strong enough and God knew that it was time to let go of that friend. You may never know the reason you lost a good friend, but God heard conversations that you didn't. And God puts and moves people into our lives and out of our lives because He knows what's best for us and shows us to be faithful. Proverbs 18.24 says, A person with unfaithful friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Other times, you don't even notice when you lose friends because you go separate ways, like in your case, with the transition to middle school. Yeah, I just lost touch with some of them who went to different schools. I sometimes miss them, but... I'm grateful I got to have them in my life while growing up. But kid, don't be scared about losing touch with friends throughout your life. Some may hurt a little, but there are greater things. Those who you make friends with should be good influences and good friends, not people who pressure you into doing things you don't want to do or people who bring you down and make you feel bad about yourself. And even if you don't become friends with those type of people, you can pray for them and ask God to show them his light so that they can be kinder to those around him. And we can't forget one of the most imp- important factors of a great friendship. Friendships that, are, that involve God are some of the best friendships. God guides those friendships and does what is best for them. David and Jonathan's friendship was guided by God. And even if your very, very good friend does not have the Lord in their heart, pray for them and for your friendship so that it can be very, very strong. And we also can't forget that even if we have all these best friends and all these friends from school, from church, anywhere, that the greatest one of all is Jesus. Because whenever you feel sad, mad, or you're just upset, he will always be there for you no matter what, to talk to, He knows you upside down. He knows you forward and backward. He knows everything about you, even more than you know yourself. So, and always just remember that God removes and puts the people into your life for a reason. Just like in one of our previous sermons, everything happens for a reason. Thank you so much, Pablo, for being here, and we will see you guys next time. But before we leave, I would like to close your eyes and pray. Pablo, you don't have to close your eyes. (laughs) Thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for this beautiful day they have given us. We ask you to please bless all of our friendships that we have in our lives right now. We thank you for those people who always stick by us and do everything by encouraging us and supporting us and staying with us through the bad times and through the good times. We ask you to please bless those friends that do not have you in their heart, that they may one day realize that you are the only way to heaven. We thank you so much. In your precious name, we all say, Amen. Bye. Before we end the night, let's ask the Holy Spirit to come into our